Hi, good morning church and welcome to our Good Friday service. Today is such a special day and we're so glad that you joined us wherever you may be watching from, whether it's in Hong Kong, whether it's overseas, welcome to our special service today. You know, if this is the very first time that you've joined us and you've ever tuned in to one of our services, please also go to our website and see some of the resources that we have available for you to just find out a little bit more about who we are as a church and what we believe. In fact, we have a saying in our church, just come and see, come and hear the good news of Jesus. And today on Good Friday, that's exactly what you will discover. You're going to hear the good news of Jesus. You're going to hear what he did for us on this day that all over the world we call Good Friday. Amen. So sit back, relax. We're going to have worship as well. Tune into the message. We're going to partake of Holy Communion towards the end. And I will see you then. God bless you, church.
Coming up, enjoy the Good Friday message shared by Pastor Wayne. 接落嚟，请你享受由唯一牧师分享嘅耶稣受难日讲道信息。Hi Church, so good to have you with us for our Good Friday service. Today is going to be a good day, Amen. Because C3, you are people who see good days. 1 Peter 3:10 says, "He who would love life and see good days." In Australia, we have a saying. Well, it's more of a greeting. We say "Good day, mate." R- literally, it means "Have a good day, mate." And、uh, who would have known? Down there in Australia, we're declaring this scripture over people all the time. But right here, right now, church, this scripture it also describes you, C3 Church Hong Kong, people who love life and will see good days. And what a good, good day to bring the good news of Jesus to you. Good Friday. Can't think of a better day. Well, maybe I can. Resurrection Sunday. Now there is a good day that will cause you to love life and see good days. Amen. You know, Pastor Mary, she's preaching on on Easter Sunday, and I read her message just recently, and I could feel the presence of God all over it just by reading it. My goodness, that presence, you know. It was placed on handkerchiefs and cloth back in the days of the Bible, and it was put upon people, and it caused them to become healed if they had sicknesses or any diseases. My goodness, how amazing is that! And it's the very same presence of God when we preach the word that that presence comes upon you. Amen. It blesses you, and it will even heal you. Amen. But as good a message as Pastor Mary's is. I'm equally excited about sharing today's message with you. Do you know in the staff meeting we decided we probably wouldn't do a Good Friday service because we we're just so busy week in week out doing our standard Sunday services. So we made the decision. Corinne crossed it out of the schedule. But then I woke up the following morning and I just had a word from God on my heart, and I just knew it was for Good Friday. So I want to share that word. Of the Lord with you today. It's a very simple message. In fact, I, I felt it was quite basic, but there's nothing basic about its truth. You know, when we think of、uh, the the Easter weekend, most people think of the the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ that brings this life, enables you to have the, the, and enjoy these good days. And it's all through the forgiveness of the blood. You know that forgiveness and the new life it comes through the atonement of the cross, but something else also comes through the atonement of the cross, and it is healing, the healing power of God, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Look what it says in Isaiah fifty-three. In fact, Isaiah fifty-three it prophesies the atonement of our sins through the blood of Jesus. It says that that. He was wounded for our transgressions, or he was wounded for our sins. But Jesus, he was also wounded for our sicknesses. And verse four actually says, "Surely he has borne our griefs, that's infirmities and pain, and carried our sorrows, that's diseases. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted." Now, how do I know the word grief there means infirmities and pains, and the word sorrows means sicknesses? Well, if you read it in the original Hebrew, they are the words that it uses. But Matthew also quotes from this passage, and he uses those words: infirmities and sicknesses. In Matthew eight verse sixteen, it says, "When evening had come, 
They brought him, that's Jesus, many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Right there, Matthew is quoting Isaiah 53, verse 4. Amen. So today, I want to speak on this topic of healing. Because the Lord, he wants you to know. He wants you to understand. He also wants you to be able to teach others that healing, it belongs to you just as much as forgiveness does. The Lord wants you to understand healing is just as easy for you to receive as forgiveness is. Jesus went to the cross as much for sicknesses as he did for your sins. Now, let me show you this in Scripture. I want to share with you three spiritual truths revealed in the Bible about this healing and the health that is tied to the cross. They will strengthen your faith, particularly in this area of healing. They'll give you a greater authority when you're dealing with sickness or symptoms of sickness for yourself, your family, and even others. So let's look at these three truths. First of all, healing is a covenant right of every believer. It says in Exodus 15, verse 26, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, before I go on, let me emphatically say to you, God is not the author of sickness. He does not put sickness on people. Let me explain why in parts of the Old Testament, it appears as though God is the one putting sickness on people. Like it sounds in this verse in Exodus 15, verse 26. What you need to understand is the Bible is a progressive revelation about the character of God. And back in the Old Testament, a person's revelation of God, it was very limited. And generally, people thought that God permitted or put sickness on some people, but not on others, for whatever reason. And Job, he's a very good illustration of this. Job, he experienced so many calamities in his life during a certain season of his life. He experienced sickness. He experienced the loss of possessions and the loss of family members. But Job himself thought that all these calamities, it was the Lord's doing. It was the Lord's will. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Yet the book of Job, it reveals that it was the devil who caused all these calamities in his life. And as one progresses throughout the Old Testament, God starts revealing his true character, his true goodness, his true nature to people. We, we see a growing revelation of the goodness and grace of God. We begin to see that he is not the author of sickness, but indeed he is the God who heals all diseases. Amen. And right here in Exodus 15, 26, this is the first revelation that God reveals about himself. He reveals a redemptive character. He revealed it to Moses, and it was through one of his names that he is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals. Now, God, he reveals many, many names throughout the Bible. He says, I am Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. I am Jehovah Royai, the Lord your shepherd. I am Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord your righteousness. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. So coming back to Exodus 15, 26, though, the context is when Israel has just crossed through the Red Sea. They've been in, in the wilderness for two or three days, and they're thirsty. But the water, it was poison. The water, you couldn't drink of it. It was so stale, it would just make everyone sick, and they'd possibly die. So God said to Moses, cast a tree into the water. And the, the, the tree there is a picture of the cross. And once the tree was cast into the waters, the waters were healed. The waters became sweet, and one could drink from them. And immediately, God covenants with Israel, saying, I will put none of these diseases upon you. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. And God, right here, he's revealing one of his redemptive attributes, that he is a healer. Amen. And sickness and things like lack and poverty, they, in fact, are curses that came into the world through sin. And Deuteronomy chapter 28, it reveals all of these curses. It lists so many of the curses, including all these kinds of sicknesses and diseases, and even sicknesses and diseases that didn't even have a name at that point in time. In fact, verse 61 says, and every sickness and every plague that is not written in the book of the law. So church, sickness, disease, 
they, they, are, they are curses that came into the world through sin, the original sin. Now, here's the good news. Christ, he is the full revelation of God's character. And when you begin to look at his life and what he did through the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it fully reveals the heart and the character of God. Amen. You see, Job, he had a very, very limited revelation of God. Abraham, he had a greater revelation than Job. But David, he had an even greater revelation than Abraham. But as you continue to go through all the way to the New Testament, through the Gospels and Christ going to the cross, we now have a full revelation of the goodness of God, of the grace of God. Amen. In Christ Jesus, the scripture says, we have now been redeemed from all the curse of the law. It says in Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Amen. And that includes the curse of sickness. And any sickness that's not even named in the book of the law, that includes pandemics and cancers, incurable diseases. It even includes COVID-19. You see, there is nothing that God cannot heal and cure. Amen. So number one, healing is your covenant right. Number two, Satan. He is the true author of sickness. It's not God. Like I said, sickness, it entered the human race through sin. Now look at this scripture in John chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. You know, this sickness, this blindness, it was not the result of the parents' sin or any individual's sin. In fact, if it needs to be attributed to anyone, it's Adam and Eve, those who committed the original sin. The truth is, everyone is born into sin. And sickness had entered the human race when humanity, Adam and Eve, fell in the garden through the original sin. Sickness and disease, they're not because you sinned. They're not because your parents sinned. It's not because your grandparents sinned. God doesn't punish people with anything because of their sin, especially sickness. And it's because Jesus, he was punished in our place. That's the whole reason why Jesus came into the world and ended up dying upon the cross. Because God, he punished his son for humanity's sin. Jesus was the one, he was penalized and punished for our sin. Jesus was condemned. Jesus was judged upon the cross so that you would not be judged. You would not be condemned. You would not be punished. So God does not punish people because of their sins. And sickness, it came into the world because of the original sin. And when man gave their authority over to the devil. But Jesus, who is the full revelation of God, he reveals the heart of your heavenly Father. He came into the world to destroy the works of sin and to destroy the works of the devil. And sickness is one of those works of the devil that Jesus came to destroy. Amen. In fact, in Scripture, there was a, a time when Jesus assigned the blame of a sickness upon the devil. The time when there was a woman who was crippled. She had been crippled of a disease for 18 years. Look at what it says in Luke 13, verse 16. Jesus says, So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. Jesus is revealing the person to blame for sickness and diseases and, and physical infirmities. It is the devil. It's not you, it's not your parents, it's not your grandparents, it's the devil. You know, another way to view sickness is it's a form of deadness. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin is always going to ultimately end with death or a deadness. And sickness, it falls somewhere in between. Somewhere in between life and death. Sickness is on its way to death or on its way to deadness. And that's why Jesus is a healer, because he gives life. He never brings deadness or death upon a person. So healing, it is your covenant right as a believer. And secondly, Satan, the devil, 
He is the true author of sickness. And number three, Jesus' will is to heal all sickness, my friend. Jesus, he is the perfect representation of our heavenly Father. And he reveals the heart of the Father to you through everything he does. Scripture actually says in 14 times that he healed all those who were sick. He healed everyone that came to him to be healed. Now, seven in the Bible, it's the number of completeness, perfection, fulfillment. So if something occurs seven times, it is established. And here we have Scripture recording it not seven times, but 14 times, two times seven. And God is making an emphatic statement here. He's emphatically telling you that he heals all. Amen. I don't have a time to go through all 14 accounts, but here are just a few of them. It says in Luke 4 verse 40, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases were brought to him. And he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. It didn't matter, church, what the sickness was, what the disease was, what the physical infirmity was. Jesus laid his hand upon them and healed every single one of them. Amen. In Matthew 9, verse 35, it says, Then Jesus went about all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. It says Jesus went about teaching and preaching first. And that's because the teaching and the preaching of the word of God is what establishes faith within the people to be able to receive their healing. That's why I'm teaching you today, church, so you, the faith for, for, for God's healing power, it will rise up on the inside of you and it just makes it so much easier for you just to receive your healing. Amen. Matthew 4, 24 says this, Then Jesus' fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, that's physical diseases, and torments, that's mental diseases, and those who were demon-possessed, spiritual diseases epileptics and paralytics. And it says, and he healed them all. Sickness, it can come from many sources, my friend. It can have a, a physical source, a mental source, a psychological source. It can even have a spiritual source. But it doesn't matter what the source is. Jesus healed them all. Amen. You know, a person, they could have even been born a certain way. Jesus can heal them all, as he did with that man that was born blind. You know, it says in Luke 6, 17 to 19, and Jesus, he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. Here we have entire multitudes being healed. Earlier on, we read how he laid his hand upon the sick. He laid his hand upon an individual and they were healed. Here, we have multitudes of people who need to be healed. And it says that Jesus healed the crowds. He can heal the individual. He can heal the crowds. Amen. Scripture is very clear what the will of God is when it comes to healing. His will is to heal them all. Hebrews 38 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Church, this is the good news. Jesus never changes. God's will regarding healing never changes. It was always Jesus' will to heal. It will always be Jesus' will to heal. Amen. Healing is as equally a part of the gospel as forgiveness is. Amen. Now, let me show you something. When Jesus sent his disciples out to various towns from time to time. He didn't say, pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. He gave them authority to heal. There's a time when he sent the 12 in Matthew 10, 7 and 8. And he says, as you go, preach and heal the sick. There, are, there was a time when he sent out the 70 in Luke 10, 9. He says, and heal the sick. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Amen. See how Jesus says, just heal the sick. He's not telling his disciples to pray for them. He's given them authority to preach and to, to heal the sick. And he also sends out the believers in Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will lay their hands upon the sick and they will recover. 
Church, we have received the same authority that Jesus gave to his disciples. We have that authority in the name of Jesus. We just need to lay our hands upon the sick and see them recover. Amen. Church, Jesus, he's given us this authority and it's in his name. You know, we don't really have to be praying to the Heavenly Father. Oh, Father, Father, as though we're begging and pleading the Heavenly Father to heal someone. We've received the authority. We are the ones that should be declaring that healing. Amen. The revelation of Scripture given to us is we just lay our hands upon the sick and we declare healing in Jesus' mighty name. Now, what's the key? It's knowing that we have that authority. You know, I'm sharing this with you today because it's something I want everyone in C3 to understand and to also teach. Healing is in the atonement of the cross. It's equally yours together with forgiveness of sin. It's your covenant right to walk in this health. Satan, he's the author of sickness. It's not God. And Jesus, he came to reveal and to do the will of the Father, and it includes healing. Amen. And he's given you and I the authority to lay our hands upon the sick and to see them recover. You know, another revelation that I've received when it comes to this healing, it's the powerful link between forgiveness and healing. You see, sin, it is the root cause of sickness. So sickness, it came into the world because of sin. But Jesus, he came into the world to deal with this root sin issue. But at the same time, he deals with the sickness issue also. And just so you wouldn't miss this important truth, just so you wouldn't overlook it, Scripture, it emphatically records the two together. Look at Psalm 103 verse 2. It says, who forgives all of our iniquities, that's sin, who heals all of our diseases, that's sickness. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, it says, he was wounded for our transgressions, that's sin, and by his stripes we are healed of those sicknesses. Amen. You know, one of the keys to receiving this healing is to be conscious that you are forgiven. You know, if you do have, say, persistent sicknesses, persistent skin issues, or you're regularly coming down with viruses or flus, focus on your forgiveness in Christ. Focus on the truth that you have been forgiven, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Tell yourself over and over, I am am forgiven. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sickness and disease, it may persist in your body or your mind because you might be carrying condemnation or guilt about something or or to do with some area in your life. But your identity in Christ Jesus is I am forgiven. I possess his righteousness. And this righteous identity, it uproots guilt, shame, and condemnation deep within you. Amen. And that's what brings healing into your life. You know, during times of prayer, I will be declaring scripture on health over myself. I'll I'll be meditating on healing scripture. You know, meditate means just to speak, to say, to think it over and over. And during my prayer walks, there'll be times when I'm just going over a scripture again and again and again and again. I'm like a broken down record in the positive. I'm just declaring that scripture over my body again and again. You know, there's an instance of this in the Bible in Mark chapter 5. In fact, it's when a woman, it says that the woman who had a sickness, a disease, an issue of blood for 12 long years in her life, and the doctors, they couldn't heal her. But then one day, it says she heard something about Jesus, that Jesus was healing people. Church, it's so important what you're hearing about Jesus. Do you know, some people today, they're hearing that Jesus doesn't heal today. Other people are hearing, well, sometimes he heals and sometimes he doesn't. And that creates such a confused mindset within people, where a scripture As I've demonstrated to you, it reveals Jesus healed all the diseases. Jesus healed everyone of their diseases. And on one particular day, this woman, she heard that Jesus was healing people. And what did she do? She started declaring it. If I just can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. You know, when you read that in Scripture, that's in Mark 5, 28, it, it, the, the implication is she's saying it. She's repeating it to herself over and over again and again, just like I was. 
during my prayer walks. I'm saying it over and over. This is what that woman was doing. This woman, in fact, she was meditating. And she, she ended up pressing her way through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. Boom, she was healed. She, re- her, she received her healing. And it's because she heard something about Jesus. Friend, you need to be hearing that same thing about Jesus. Don't allow your soul, don't allow your mind to be hearing any negativity or anything else about the fact that Jesus heals because it will cause doubt and unbelief to rise up within you. Amen. You need to be knowing. You need to be hearing. You need to be believing and let it come out of your mouth. You need to be speaking to yourself. Jesus heals everyone. Jesus heals all diseases. Amen. You know, another personal key of mine when it comes to healing, is to personalize Scripture. Put your name in the Bible. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus' stripes I was healed. I put my name in the Bible. By Jesus' stripes Wayne was healed. I'll say from time to time, by Jesus' stripes, Jake, my son, was healed. By Jesus' stripes, Mary was healed. I'll, I, if I need to pray for my dog, I'll even put my dog's name in there. You know, it's called personalizing scripture. When I see the Bible and I read the Bible, I don't see it as a book that's presented to humanity. I read it as a book that's been presented to me. He is my God. Jesus is my Lord. And this is his word to me. When you personalize it, it becomes real to you, just like it becomes real to me. You know, there were times in my uh, earlier, in the earlier days of my life, I received certain injuries. I remember once I was around 20 or 21. I received this serious eye injury. And uh, I could have lost my eye. I ran into this chicken wire and my eye was the eyelid, which is dangling down. And, and uh, I had to go into some emergency surgery. And what I did afterwards, though, uh, I went to this big sporting oval. And every morning, I would do all these laps. And I was just declaring, by Jesus stripes, my eye is healed. By Jesus stripes, my eye is healed. And if you looked at my eye today, you can't even notice that I had major surgery on it once. And there's another time I had this serious sporting injury. It actually put me out of action for 18 long months. I could not walk without the aid of crutches. I couldn't, even with crutches, after every 20 meters, I had to rest. And uh, I wasn't going to put up with that. And I got so mad at that sickness. Every day, I would go down to the rock pools in Sydney, and I would just wade back and forth in these rock pools where I could walk because I, there was, I was surrounded by water. And I was declaring, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. And you know what? I received my healing. And, I, and doctors said to me that I would never, ever be able to run again. Do you know last Sunday, I went for a 10K run in the morning before the service? So... The Word of God has proven those doctors' reports wrong. Amen. I give all the glory and praise to Jesus. Amen. You need to do this, church, because another reason for persistent sickness in the body is when your flesh has a stronger voice than your spirit in your mind. You see, meditating and pondering and going over that scripture again and again, it weakens the voice of your flesh and it strengthens the voice of your spirit in your soul. Amen. And when your soul, that's your mind, your heart, hears and knows the voice of your spirit, we've been teaching on this. That's what we call a prosperous soul. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. As your soul begins to prosper in its understanding of the word and its understanding of your spirit man, the spirit man identity, you'll begin to manifest this health. Amen. As we begin to close church, you know, we're also so blessed as a church because we have another great revelation. It's the power of the Holy Communion. So why don't you just start preparing yourselves now to receive the Holy Communion? I have mine right here. And you know, this bread or a cracker or whatever it is that you have, it represents the Lord's broken body. And this juice, it represents the Lord's spilt blood. And Holy Communion, it's one way that we can walk in divine health through its preventative power, through its protection over our lives. You know, it protects you from getting sick. 
And if you did catch something, generally it won't remain for all that long within your body. This is the experience that Pastor Mary and I have. You know, when we first came to Hong Kong, we were coming down with all sorts of symptoms and sicknesses and diseases, flus for three to four weeks. And today we can, we can get something, some flu symptom, but you know, within 24 hours, we seem to be fully recovered from it. And it's, it's almost like it's, we've, we've, there's this progressive revelation, this progressive protection and healing it brings upon our body. And we're partaking of these elements on a regular basis. And, and it's just increased our faith, our understanding, and our revelation that sickness is part of the atonement of the cross. Amen. So why don't you take these elements and put them in your hands? I hold them up to the Lord because I like to exalt Him above me, exalt Him above anything in my life. And that's why I exalt them right now, because they represent Christ. Amen. They represent what He did for me upon the cross. You're surrendered before Jesus. So Lord God, I thank you right now. I thank you for the bread. This bread represents the broken body of Jesus. And you declare in 1 Peter 2.24, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. And as I partake of this bread, I'm ingesting your life, and your health, Lord Jesus, into my body. Amen. Let us partake. And Lord, we also thank you for the blood. Atonement comes through the blood. The blood represents the forgiveness of our sin, but also redemption and healing from all of our sicknesses. Amen. So let's partake of the blood. Let me just pray for you, church. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful, beautiful people of C3 Church Hong Kong. This is a church that you so love. You so love them. And Lord, I declare over all these people that you so love. They are healthy and they are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Just as you healed all the sick, as you revealed in your word, I thank you that all the people of C3 Church Hong Kong, they are healthy and they are whole. Lord, as I said, this is a church that you so love. And I declare over those who might be carrying skin issues, who might be carrying bone issues and organ issues, Lord, anything to do with their anatomy, I declare your healing power, your healing anointing upon them in Jesus' mighty name. I declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper. Cancers will not prosper. Tumors will not prosper. Pandemics will not prosper. Addictions will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare your protection and your health over all their family members in Jesus' mighty name. Church, even, and even if you're not a member of C3 Church Hong Kong, but you've been watching this broadcast, you're hearing the word, God's will is for you to be healed, my friend. So as you just simply hear this word, faith comes. And it flows up from your spirit and it rises up in your soul to believe. So you just believe it, my friend. You just receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, church. You know, we look forward to seeing you again on Easter Sunday. Pastor Mary has such a good word that she received from the Lord. It's going to bless you. She has such an evangelistic touch on her preaching. So can I encourage you, invite a friend or some family members to sit in and listen to that particular message. Whether in English or Chinese, it's going to bless you and it's going to bless them. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Sacrifice 
We thank you so much for the gift of your beautiful son, Jesus. You say we should do this in remembrance of your love, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Body. We did it open for me. We thank you that on the cross at Calvary you gave yourself for us. You were wounded for my transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment of my sins were upon you. By your strength, we are healed. You are strong and healthy, based on the righteous foundation of your friendship. Thank you for dying on the cross and seeing us home. From the crown of my head. To the very soles of my feet. Every cell. Every, every organ. Every function of my body is complete. Restored. Renewed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Your sinless blood gives my redemption. Your chosen suffering brings perfect life to me. Lord, your sacrifice has made me whole. Through the cross I am forever yours. And this is a Thank you, Thank you for your blood that was shed for the forgiveness of my sins. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful time that we shared together. What a beautiful time of communion where we discovered just the healing power of Jesus. Amen. Today is a good good day. It is Good Friday and we are so thankful for what Christ did for us upon the cross and we're also thankful that you joined us today as part of this special service. But church, as we always do, I just want to pray a final blessing over you as you go into your weekend. Just receive this blessing, amen, for yourself and for your family. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be so gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that indeed it is a good day. Today is Good Friday and we remember all that Christ did for us upon the cross. Lord, we are conscious of that. Every day we're so conscious, Christ conscious of all that he did for us. Jesus, we thank you for your finished work upon the cross. Lord, I just pray that our church 
and those watching now, just receive a revelation, a deeper revelation, Lord, of your love for them, how loved they are, Lord. I thank you for your presence, Lord. That's your promise to never leave us nor forsake us. And I thank you for your peace, Lord. Let your peace reign in every heart and in every household. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. Remember, we also have our Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday service this coming Sunday, and we will see you then. God bless you. Thank you for watching C3 Church Hong Kong online service. We hope you enjoyed the message and look forward to having you join us next time. God bless. 感谢收看 C3 教会网上直播，希望你享受到今日嘅信息。期待下星期在网上直播见到你。愿主祝福你。